Why are these deep sea creatures who live in the depths of the ocean suddenly coming to the surface? This scary looking fish is called the sea devil. It roams around with a torch-like structure on its head, which helps it lure prey into its mouth. The Japanese have believed for centuries that seeing this fish above water is a sign of disaster. In Japan, a fisherman went out on his boat to catch fish. He threw his fishing net into the water in the middle of the sea. After a while, when he was pulling up the fish caught in his net, he found a very strange long fish tangled in it. This fish was incredibly long, almost like a snake, measuring about six meters. Its body was slimy and rubbery, white in color. This wasn't a normal fish. It was a deep sea fish that had come from the ocean depth. Normally, these fish are found about one kilometer below the sea surface. The fisherman released it back into the ocean because according to Japanese folklore, seeing another fish above the water is a sign of impending disaster. This belief became particularly significant after the 2011 earthquake in Japan, when the bodies of around 20 deep sea fish were found on the Japanese coast right before the massive earthquake. However, doubts are now being raised about these beliefs. This is not just happening in Japan. In the last few years, similar occurrences have been reported in various parts of the world. Dead bodies of deep sea fish have been found on the ocean floor. In 2023, a fisherman caught around 50 deep sea fish in one go. And in 2024, three deep sea fish were spotted in California. In February 2025, a live deep sea fish was seen in Mexico. What are you doing? That's an oar fish. The frequent appearance of these fish is becoming quite astonishing. Just a few years ago, seeing a deep sea fish was a rare event. In fact, it was only in 2001 that the first footage of a live deep sea fish was captured. But it's not just the deep sea fish that are emerging. Many other deep sea creatures are suddenly appearing at the surface. One example is the giant phantom jellyfish, a fascinating creature with tentacles longer than 10 meters, resembling ribbon. These are typically found one to two kilometers deep in the ocean. But in Antarctica, they've been spotted at depths of 80 meters. This year alone, there have been two more such incident. In Russia, fishermen caught a creature that people started calling an alien. It was a smooth lump fish with a body resembling a brain. Additionally, near the coast of Spain, about 2,000 meters from the shore, a black sea devil anglerfish was spotted near the surface of the sea. This scary looking fish, called the sea devil, is another example of a deep sea creature that has rarely, if ever, been seen near the surface. Clearly, this raises the question, what is happening? These deep sea creatures, whose existence was unknown to humans for thousands of years, are now suddenly appearing on the surface. Let's dive deeper into this issue in today's video. The entire surface of the Earth is covered by about 71% water. We have divided this water into different oceans. 97% of the water found on Earth is in the five main oceans, the Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean, Arctic Ocean, and Southern Ocean. 94% of the world's wildlife is also found in these oceans. However, humans have only explored and mapped 5% of the ocean so far. The remaining 95% of the ocean, especially the deep sea, is still unknown. Interestingly, we have better maps of Mars than we do of the ocean floor. And while 12 astronauts have spent a total of 300 hours on the moon, only three people have spent just three hours at the deepest point of the ocean, the Challenger Deep. When you stand on a beach in Goa and look at the blue water, you can only see the top layer of the ocean. This is called the sunlight zone, where sunlight can reach. The wildlife in the ocean is most colorful and diverse in this zone. It is the only layer of the ocean where photosynthesis is possible, which is why you find macroalgae and phytoplankton here. These two living beings are the base of the marine food chain, and besides them, this zone is also home to most of the creatures we associate with the ocean, whales, sharks, turtles, and dolphins. But as we go deeper, the light starts to fade. Water absorbs sunlight. At a depth of 10 meters, only 16% of the sunlight remains. By 100 meters, only 1% of the light remains. 
and as we go further, below 1,000 meters, no light reaches. This is why it becomes very difficult for humans to see beyond this depth in the ocean. However, after the sunlight zone, another zone begins at a depth of 200 meters, which we call the twilight zone. In the twilight zone, blue and violet light can reach, but all other colors disappear. It is in this zone that strange creatures begin to appear, like this strawberry squid, a squid that looks exactly like a strawberry. It has one big eye and one small eye. The big eye is for seeing in the lighted water above and the small eye is for seeing in the darkness below. The reason this squid appears red to us is due to bioluminescence. Since we are observing it at higher depths under full spectrum light it appears red but in the twilight zone it will look almost black because there is no red light there. Its natural color acts like camouflage in its environment. If you go a little further down from the twilight zone, you'll encounter the bloody belly comb jelly. Once again, it shows a fluorescent red color. Most deep sea creatures cannot see the red color. These deep sea creatures use light either to camouflage themselves, to attract other animals, or to communicate with one another. Take a look at this incredibly beautiful creature. It almost looks like a water fairy. It's called the sea angel. It's even smaller than a human finger and its bare belly glows in the dark. Although it's completely blind, this sea angel can turn into a devil in just a few seconds. It suddenly extends its tentacle to weave a net that makes escape impossible. And as soon as its stomach is full, it stops glowing. The barrel eye fish lives at depths of 600 to 800 meters. It's another truly remarkable fish with a transparent dome-shaped head. Look at it closely. There isn't any other fish in the world that even slightly resembles it. At first glance, you might assume the black dots above its eyes are its eyes, but in reality, they are green bulbs. An interesting fact is that these eyes can only see upward. So how does it spot its prey when feeding? Some scientists theorize that it might rotate its eyes in some way. It really seems like something from alien technology, a living submarine with a transparent dome fitted with a 360-degree rotating periscope. If you go a bit deeper, you'll come across these terrifying giant squids. These squids can be as long as 13 meters, equivalent to a two-story building. Their eyes are 25 to 30 centimeters in diameter, about the size of a basketball, making them the largest in the animal kingdom, perfectly adapted for hunting in the dark waters. Once you cross 1,000 meters, the twilight zone ends and the midnight zone begins, where no sunlight reaches. The creatures inhabiting these depths are typically those that roam the twilight zone like deep sea anglerfish, including the black sea devil. The first anglerfish was popularized by the movie Finding Nemo. These fish have a fishing rod-like appendage on their heads with a glowing bulb attached. They use this bulb to lure prey in the dark waters, the same technique shown in the film. In these species, males are 10 times smaller than females and their sole purpose is reproduction. When a male finds a female, he attaches himself to her body and essentially merges with her. They share the same blood and in a way, he becomes like an organ of the female. Females even collect multiple partners for reproduction, with six to eight males attaching themselves to one female. Hearing all this, you can imagine that the underwater world is a completely different story from what we see on land. Now, let's dive even deeper, to depths of 2,000 to 3,000 meters, where you'll find a self-sustaining farmer of its own food. This is the tea crab, nicknamed the yeti crab, because the fuzzy covering on its arms resembles the hair of a yeti. But the yeti crab is blind in its own way. That fur is actually a colony of bacteria. It farms these bacteria on its hairy arms and then eats them. Specifically, these are sulfide oxidizing bacteria that thrive on it because it lives near hydrothermal vents. If you go down to 4,000 meters, the midnight zone ends and the abyssal zone begins. This zone extends down to about 6,000 meters and remains largely unexplored. Here, you find creatures that exist nowhere else on Earth. For example, even the wreckage of the Titanic lies in this zone at a depth of around 3,810 meters. Certain animals have been discovered that inhabit these extreme depths. Take the Dumbo octopus, for instance. Its name comes from its large, fin-like structures, reminiscent of Disney's flying elephant, Dumbo. These octopuses never migrate to the upper waters, spending their entire lives in the deep sea. In fact, the Dumbo octopus is arguably one of the cutest deep sea animals out there. They swim gracefully and slowly, earning descriptions akin to a deep sea ballet. Most of the ocean floor is found at around 6,000 meters deep, but in some areas, 
the ocean reaches even greater depths, from 6,000 up to 11,000 metres, a region known as the Hadal Zone. This is the deepest part of the ocean, still filled with mysteries. So why are these deep sea creatures coming up to the surface? During World War II, some sonar operators in the Navy made a fascinating discovery. They noticed that at night, the entire seafloor appeared to rise hundreds of metres upward on their sonar displays. In reality, no part of the seafloor was moving. Instead, vast quantities of fish, squid and plankton were swimming upward. This curious phenomenon is now known as the deep scattering layer. It serves as a window into the ocean's hidden highways, where billions of marine creatures move up and down every day. Scientists have found that from tiny plankton to medium-sized fish, billions of organisms ascend to the surface and then retreat back to the depths. This is considered the largest migration on Earth, and astonishingly, it has been happening, hidden from human eyes, for centuries. Imagine billions of animals, with a combined weight 25 times that of all humanity, moving up and down every day. This vertical movement, known as DRVM, DL, vertical migration, occurs every single night. If you look at the graphs, you'll notice that when the sun is out, the yellowish layer, normally found at about 400 meters, stays down. But at night, that same layer ascends to the surface, and this is isn't a localized phenomenon. It's observed everywhere, from the Pacific and Indian Oceans to the North Atlantic and Southern Ocean. The reason behind this challenging nightly journey is simple. It's all for food. Photosynthesis can only occur in the sunlit surface layers, where phytoplankton, the primary food source for many small fish, is abundant. You might wonder why these creatures don't feed in the morning. The answer is that during daylight, they risk being eaten by predators such as sharks, whales, and dolphins. Therefore, these Small fish and deep sea organisms rise at night to feed in the safety of darkness, then retreat back to the depths before morning comes. The problem now is that in recent years, due to climate change, the daily migrations of these deep sea creatures are becoming permanent. As the earth warms, these organisms are moving upward in search of cooler environments heading toward the poles. You're probably aware that global warming produces a lot of heat and our oceans absorb about 90% of that excess heat. Over time, as more heat is absorbed, the surface water becomes warmer, even though the deeper water remains cold at the same temperature as before, since sunlight never reaches those depths. Warm water is also less dense than cold water, so it stays on top while the colder water remains below. This lack of mixing means that the oxygen present in the surface water isn't reaching the deep sea, leading to oxygen depletion in those lower layers. Even a slight drop in oxygen levels can cause these deep sea populations to decline dramatically, putting them at risk of extinction. These creatures have evolved in stable, oxygen-rich environments. So now, in their desperate search for oxygen, they are moving upward into surface waters, a dangerous move, since they are not adapted to life near the surface and can easily become prey for sharks or whales during the day. Scientists estimate that by the end of this century, the temperature in the abyssal zone could increase by as much as one degree Celsius, causing deep sea organisms to migrate four to 11 times faster than their surface dwelling counterparts. The future of these incredible creatures is now in jeopardy and many species might become permanently extinct. Shockingly, numerous species that exist in the deep sea have yet to be discovered. Every year, new animals are found in the deep and because of human impacts, some of these species could vanish before we even learn of their existence. And this issue isn't limited only to these creatures. Our own lives are deeply connected to the ocean as well. The deep sea stores a massive amount of carbon. Phytoplankton absorb carbon and transport it into the deep ocean, which helps regulate the levels of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. However, the ongoing changes due to climate change are reducing the ocean's capacity to absorb carbon dioxide. While climate change remains a long-term threat, there's an immediate danger facing these deep sea creatures as well, one that comes from human activities. That danger is deep sea mining. 